Hello there. Welcome to Stay at Home Cinema, brought to you by TIFF and Crave. Glad to see you at home. We're streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and at tiff.net slash stay at home. My name is Cameron Bailey. I'm the artistic director and co-head of TIFF. Tonight, we're watching Crazy Rich Asians, which will start at 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Crave, and in a few minutes, the director, John M. Chu. I am speaking to you tonight from the Shangri-La Hotel in Toronto. Check it out. The team here has graciously and safely welcomed me to this absolutely beautiful suite. I couldn't think of a better place to watch this story of Singapore high society. Big thanks to our friends at the Shangri-La for their hospitality and for offering a prize. If you're a TIFF member, look out for an upcoming newsletter with details on how to win a one night stay at the Shangri-La. Before we begin, some shout outs. I'm speaking to you from Indigenous lands, so I want to shout out all Indigenous storytellers and their communities from coast to coast to coast. All levels of government, Government of Canada, the province of Ontario and the City of Toronto who are supporters of TIFF. All frontline workers working to keep us safe, healthy and fed. And a massive shout out to our corporate partners, many of whom have been supporting TIFF for years. Our lead sponsor, Bell, our major sponsors, RBC, L'Oreal Paris and Visa. And donors, members, maybe people like you, you're keeping us going, so thank you for that. I also wanna thank our community partner for tonight, the Toronto Real Asian International Film Festival. As Canada's largest Pan-Asian film festival, Real Asian provides a platform for Asian media artists and fuels a growing awareness and appreciation for Asian cinema in Canada. Real Asian is an important partner, partner festival to TIFF. We've been friends of ours for many years and they're working on events with us throughout the whole year. We look, we look forward to hosting Real Asian once again at TIFF Bell Lightbox once we're back in that building. Thank you to Real Asian for putting the word out about tonight's event. We will be welcoming questions from our friends at Real Asian during tonight's Q&A as well. You know, it is truly ridiculous that Hollywood movies by and about Asian Americans are still so damn rare. And if that starts changing faster, we will have crazy rich Asians to thank. The movie adaptation of Kevin Kwan's best-selling novel did not come to play. The cast, Constance Wu, Henry Golding, Michelle Yeoh, Gemma Chan, Aquafina, Ken Jeong, and more. Gorgeous locations and costumes that whisk you away to a world of fantasy and a classic story of star-crossed love. Crazy Rich Asians became the highest grossing romantic comedy in a decade. And let's hope it's kicked open the door for a whole lot more movies, TV shows, and pop culture. The man who brought it all together is director John M. Chu. John, welcome to Stay at Home Cinema. It's good to be here. So John, how has your lockdown been going? Um, it's, you know, I have two young kids under the age of three. Right. So um, at least I don't have to teach them things. I just have mm -hmm. to entertain them. Um, but uh, I wouldn't mind going to that hotel that you're at right now. Thank you. <laughs> it is nice, and I may be the only guest here tonight. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the success, the success of Crazy Rich Asians was a breakthrough for Hollywood and for the Asian diaspora. But was it also a breakthrough for you personally? Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, it changed one uh, deciding on that movie, um, you know, I had done a lot of movies before that, a lot of studio films, um, but I was sort of at a place in my career where I wanted to do something uh, that meant a, a lot personally to me and that scared the heck out of me, which was sort of tackling my uh, my cultural identity crisis, which I never had made a movie about. I made one short film in USC uh, called Guaylo, mm -hmm. uh, um, and uh, I never really showed anyone that movie because I just didn't know if I had the right answers. Uh, so choosing a Crazy Rich Asians and In the Heights actually at the same time, that was my, my the movie that I'm just finishing now, um, was definitely a change for me. So uh, the fact that people actually saw it, and I thought it was a movie that I would just do for myself and it'll probably not a lot of people will see it, but I'll feel like it's worth something. Um, but now having done that, it's really hard to go back to movies without bigger purpose to it. Mm -hmm. um, just because the feeling of everyone on set, the crew, the cast, um, you're pouring everything out. And for me as uh, as a human being, as I'm getting older, um, my time is getting more and more limited. And so mm. that aspect to it is, is so important. So it's, it's changed my whole life, uh, my whole, what I see of what I want to spend time on, for sure. Mm. That's fantastic. Um, I heard that before you were even attached to direct Crazy Rich Asians, you were actually written 
into the book by Kevin Kwan, you and your family? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little it's a little nutty. Like, I did not know this beforehand, um, but Kevin is very good friends with my cousin, Vivian Chu, in New York. Huh. And Vivian is a little older than I am, um, but she was always like the cool cousin. So I didn't see her a ton growing up. Um, she was in New York City doing her thing. And so um, when we read the book, when I got like emails from my sister, from my, uh, from my other cousins and from people saying, you got to read this book. And I read it. Um, I didn't I didn't know that she was so close to him. And apparently, you know, the Chews, Rachel Chu uh, and that family in the book is from Cupertino, which is where my family is from. Uh -huh. And so a lot of the stories uh, are from her stories telling him about her family uh, in the Bay Area. So, and then there's a section in the book where uh, Nick is defending Rachel's family to Eleanor because Eleanor's like, you know, hammering that their family isn't like old money. <clears throat> and she's like, yes, that's true that they don't have, or Nick is saying they don't have, uh, they, don't, they don't have old money, but they work hard for the money that they do have. They even have a cousin who makes movies in Hollywood. <laughs> And that's you. And that's me, which is <laughs> nutty. Because I read it and I didn't even get it. I thought, well, oh, that's weird. But I, you know, you see the world and you're like, oh, that's weird. That's kind of like me. You never actually think it is about you. But Kevin confirmed that that's what it is. And so you I, were really fated to be the director to, to make it. So. I guess so. Wow. Um, it's kind of been hard, though, because it had been about 25 years uh, since the Joy Luck Club, Eat, Drink, Man, Woman, movies that featured uh, an Asian American cast right at the center of the, the story that, that Hollywood was making, not independent features, but stupid yeah. movies. And I can't imagine that you wouldn't have had questions about, is it Asian enough? Is it too Asian? Does it get the Singapore high society right? Does it get the Asian diaspora right? All of these things. Um, how did you manage to, to face all of those questions coming at you? I'm still facing them today to this day after the screening. People will bring it up again. Right. Now, I think that that's part of the deal. It's part of the conversation. If you're going to get into it um, and you're going to confront these things, then you're going to you're 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 going to stir it all up. And mm -hmm. I think that agitation is good. Um, it's not. And by the way, I don't. People who uh, come after me for doing this or that, like I don't blame them either. Like this is a system. I understand that frustration. I watch movies. I have the same frustration. I, one movie can only do so much, and I'm not sure everyone fully understands it. So, but and and that's sort of the problem is the more movies, the more um, that each movie can do its own individual thing, and it doesn't have to take on the whole freaking pie. So, but yes, I was scared, and it's the reason why I never made movies like this before. I mean, you don't want to face those things. You literally say one thing wrong, or you have one accent wrong and you get killed. Um, but <clears throat> there's a certain, I got to an age and got to an experience level where I think I built enough thick skin. Um, you know, I had enough failures in my other movies and, and, and wins in my other movies that I felt like I could take on whatever would come after me. So, um, so I was prepared in that way. The, the biggest thing is I really wanted to um, not disappoint my family, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so very what did your family think of it by the way oh they loved it they loved it but okay, the first time i showed them i was i was scared in pre-production I, I i made a playlist of songs of these old-fashioned uh songs from china in the 60s that sound like they could have been in a in a hollywood musical back then and i played it for my mom and she knew all the words to all the songs which shocked me and then and she her face like her eyes glue like 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 they were uh, she's like a teenager again and i'll never forget that look because she said you and my, my your your dad and i used to do the jitterbug to this new music oh, and when i heard that i knew that that all the other stuff all other weight on my shoulders could go away like i just needed to make um, an entertaining film that that personally as an asian american going to asia for the first time that, that experience i really wanted to focus on and two these this generational cultural uh dynamic between um eleanor and rachel to me was like my parents and myself mm -hmm. and and none and we didn't have the answers there's no there is no full answer of which as the next generation comes what they should take and let go of and culturally so to me to represent both equally and respectfully, uh, that was the pressure that I felt more than, than anything else. Um, and when you have, have Michelle Yeoh, she's also going to not let you uh, make the older <laughs> generation 
That's right. Uh, look at the bad guys. So yes, no, no, you do not mess with Michelle Yeoh, and and she yeah. understands that Singaporean culture so well. Um, we've got some questions from uh, TIFF members and donors, and also members of the the Real Asian F Film Festival. Uh, we also can take some live questions, so please comment. I'm going to look to see if I can get some of those as well uh, for John. Um, here's one from Real Asian member Heishi, who asks, "How and when did you know Constance Wu was the right actor to play Rachel?" I mean, listen. When you read a script, you have you imagine. Um, uh, sometimes I imagine actors, sometimes I don't. But this one, I, I definitely uh, Constance uh, was right in my mind. Um, I didn't know one. I knew she had not been seen in this light before because she was doing Fresh Off the Boat, and this is a different role than that. Um, she's mm -hmm. not a mother in this one. She, she's like uh, <clears throat> she would be America's sweetheart in in this, and and not a mother. So it was it was very uh, different. But um, so I sat down with her early, but I didn't think our schedules would actually work out. Um, the reality is her schedule and our schedule were completely on top of each other. So we sort of let go of that idea and then just started looking for other Rachel Chews. Um, and then she wrote me a letter when she was on a plane one day. And she said, basically, I need to do this movie. I feel this it's, it's our fate to work together on this. It's very important for, uh, 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 women and uh, Asian Americans and on so many levels. She said all this stuff and it was really a beautiful letter. She said, and that would mean you'd have to push your movie. And she's like, I know that doesn't necessarily work with everybody, but if you were, I would give you everything. And um, it worked. I looked at it and I was like, I talked to Nina Jacobson and Brad and John, our, our producers, and I said, we gotta wait. This is this is the one. Mm -hmm. And we did, we waited probably around six months um, to, uh, and we sort of reset in order to uh, make that happen. And it was worth it. 100%, yeah. Here's a question from uh, Lila Ahmad, a real Asian member. How long did it take to scout all the locations for the movie? And is there anywhere that you wish you could have included? So many places I wish we could have included. I mean, oh, yeah? Singapore is just gorgeous. It has so many great locations. Um, it is a f city of the future. Like you go there and you cannot believe how, A, how clean it is, but B, like there are, uh, there are buildings that are classical um, and, 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 and old and, and has such history to it. And then you have the stuff that is so forward thinking with plants growing all over skyscrapers. I mean, it is beautiful. Um, we, we took a long time. Um, I love shooting in locations because it just, when you're not building sets, you it becomes, I don't know, for me and the actors, we get to fill the space. We get to play the mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. um, so I love that discovery of that. So it took us a while. The hard, uh, the places that I thought, well, we almost didn't get um, uh, of the big gardens at the end of the, for the, um, for the re wedding reception uh, mm -hmm. with the big trees and all that, the super garden there, um, mm -hmm. because super trees, because uh, there was just a lot, you know, it's, it's hard to shoot in these big locations that are government controlled and you have tourists coming in, which is their biggest money maker. And we're trying to come in with our cameras. Um, but we got it, thank God, like literally the day before. Um, so we made that happen. And there's there's a couple other places, I'm sure. Raffles, I wish we saw more, which is the hotel they stay yeah, in. That's, see, that's that's legendary. That hotel is beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, there's a lot of the black and white houses that are there. Look up black and white houses, Singapore. Oh. There are these old sort of military houses that um, now um, you can't own one, but you can lease it from the government. They are just gorgeous and so classy. All right, we've got a few people in the comments, uh, Sai Ryu and also Michael Garabian who are asking about the sequel. So I know Kevin wrote two more books. Yes. And did. they're gonna be, become movies. What can you tell us about those? Uh, so we're in the middle of it right now, and it is difficult. I'm not going to lie. You know, we we took liberties in that first movie. If you actually watch the first movie and read the first and then read the book, they're pretty different. I mean, the essence, the soul is the same, um, but we changed a lot of stuff to make the movie work. And so that is hard when suddenly you've skipped storylines and mm -hmm. got you know and and sped up certain relationships, slow down other relationships. Uh, because the second, two, the, the second and the third book take take some of those things and 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 really draw it out, and we don't have that opportunity. And some of the characters you want to see in the second movie aren't in the second and third book, and so 
we're doing a lot of different versions right now to try to figure out the best combination. But I can promise you, we we are not taking it lightly. We are we we will not go back in unless it's better and we have something more to say with it. So yeah. um, got a lot of people to satisfy now, people who love the first movie. So yes, of course. I'm sure you will. Oh, the thing is Astrid and um and uh, Astrid and her relationships, of course, we want to explore that more because in the books, uh, they explore that a lot. And and we didn't have necessarily all the room in the first movie. So okay. Here's a very specific question from uh, one of our TIFF Contributor Circle members, Dia Suwa Singh, who asks, what inspired the scene where Araminta walks down the aisle, especially in reference to the water? Um, yeah, that was, um, I'm trying to think, because it, it was sort of an evolution, to be honest. The, the song, first of all, um, uh, Can't Help Falling in Love, is my parents' song. Is there, with their oh. So for me, that was a uh, nod to them. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing was I love um, framing a wedding scene that it wasn't about the bride and the groom, um, that it was about the guests mm -hmm. and all the things that were happening. Um, but at the same time, uh, um, you know, new love was happening, a couple was breaking up, mm -hmm. um, and this new commitment was happening. So um, the well, I'll tell you the butterflies that everyone's holding with the uh, lights yeah. that was inspired by Jim Henson's at her, his funeral, they had this beautiful thing. They gave everybody these butterfly um, uh, puppets. And so the whole time, these butterflies are flying in the air. It is just gorgeous. So I want to do something like that, but we had like glowy, we added the glow and we did more like um, more like uh, uh, fireflies. Mm -hmm. um, and then the water itself, we walked in, we were, at one point we were going to shoot in Bangkok and we walked into this hotel lobby and the hotel lobby, you walk in and it goes up and there's an inch of water the whole throughout the whole lobby. Mm. And you can walk through it up to the front desk. And there's trees, giant trees, I don't know, 30, 40 foot trees on either side. It's all indoors. And I thought, this is the most beautiful place I've ever been. I want to have, like, how gorgeous to have a wedding. And, you know, people are barefoot walking in that water and that water is just simmering. And there's lotus in the, in, the, in the water as well floating around. I was like, I want to have a wedding here. And so... And so I was like, we got to get this place. And then when it didn't um, go, when we were, we're not going to shoot there anymore, uh, we were like, let's let's go to let's find the church in Singapore and let's make our own like water flow mm -hmm. there. And then the grass, let's make it so the grass comes up so it looks like it's indoors in the out and an in outdoors in an indoor space. So yeah, yeah. A um, couple more questions. Um, you have directed the adaptation of Lin-Manuel Miranda's In the Heights, which a lot of people are very excited about. I know that had to be pushed back to next year, but what can you tell us about that movie? Uh, it's a really special one, really, really special. I, it's, um, in a way, I feel like everything I've done uh, has built up to, to, to making a, a musical and, and, and a Lin-Manuel musical at that um, in Washington Heights with, um, this community, um, Anthony Ramos is our lead who plays Usnavi, which is with the part was originally uh, played by Lynn Manuel Miranda. So we have such a great cast, Leslie Grace, Melissa Barrera, uh, Corey Hawkins. I mean, this, uh, this is an amazing, amazing cast and they sing and they dance. There's so much joy. Yeah. Uh, Crazy Rich Asians had so much joy and I loved making that as part of that. And then this one, again, it's celebrating community it's celebrating home, what home means. Um, and it's really like the story of America um, through this bodega owner uh, on this block in Washington Heights. So I think uh, I'm excited when we all can be together in a movie theater again. Yes. I think yeah, really that. Because that's the energy. You want people dancing in the aisles, singing, bringing their flags, waving it. Um, so that's what we're really trying to maintain when we, when we release the theaters next year. You talked a little bit about how the experience of, of making Crazy Rich Asians really changed you as a filmmaker and, and the stories you wanted to tell. And now that you're doing In the Heights as well and the sequels for Crazy, Crazy Rich Asians, do you feel like you have found your moment or your voice as a filmmaker that this is like a new chapter for you? We're going to see more of this kind of storytelling? Um, yes. I mean, I definitely feel like this is a chapter, 100%. I'm growing up. I'm finding, you know, it took me, I got discovered really early, 22 years old, straight out of USC. By uh, Steven Spielberg. What's that? By Steven Spielberg. And Spielberg, and I got like, um, 
yeah, I mean, it was, it was, I got attached to all these movies. It was a, it was an amazing time. And yet I didn't, I'd never made anything. I didn't make commercials, music videos, any, I, I didn't even really bit a PA on any set. So when you're in that position, you have to learn a lot of things before you kind of get control of your own art. So I, I think I took me six, seven studio movies. I never did independent movies. Mm -hmm. Studio movies to discover, A, how to make a movie, mm -hmm. B, how to work with actors, C, how to uh, deal with a studio, uh, D, what, 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 how, how, what are my relationship with the audiences, um, and then who am I as an artist and what are the stories I want to tell? I think this is... Uh, with Crazy Rich Asians in the Heights is, is, is a new chapter in, 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 in the stories that move me and that are scary to me. But at the same time, I feel very, um, like I've, I now have a, a different kind of confidence. Like I, I know I earned the spot. I know how to do this thing. So let's tell, let me get stories through that need to be told. Mm -hmm. um, but I hope that it's not my only chapter. I hope that right. I continue to evolve. That's my relationship with movies um, throughout my whole life that, um, I'm just living my life and trying to create as much as I can and whatever subject matter I feel compelled to do at that moment is what I will do and and that will change through, through right. my life. So A comment just popped up that said they want to see Henry Golding as James Bond. So maybe that'll be the next one. I would love that. I would love that. But why be James Bond when he could be, what's, we can create a character and do whatever we want with it. So True, um, true. But yes, he is very, I mean, in real life, he's like James Bond, so. Is he really? Okay. He um, is like one of the most suave and yet accessible people. And if someone, like I took a walk with him in Venice Beach, every 10 feet, he's helping somebody. Like I don't, I just ignore things sometimes. I'm just like, especially when you're on Venice, people are like yelling at you, grabbing things. Like you just go. He's like helping someone who fell off their bike, uh, found an iPhone on the side, went into the hotel to give it to the to the woman in the front to 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 have it uh, found later. Uh, mm -hmm. Talking to people who need water and like it's it was crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's just a good good guy with a good heart. Oh, that's really good to hear, uh, John. Thank you so much. We're gonna shift over to the movie now. If you're in Canada, we're moving over to Crave. We'll press play on Crazy Rich Asians at 7:30 p.m. Eastern. That's 4:30 p.m. on the West Coast. If you're not in Canada. You know what you need to do. Find Crazy Rich Asians wherever you can. Get yourself something tasty. Get yourself your champagne. Okay, you're going to be hungry. What's that? They're going to be hungry. So get that. <laughs> yes. Get the food. And when you see that first uh, Singapore scene, you're going to be hungry. Get your fancy tea if you need to do that. We will be live tweeting uh, from 7.30 onward. Uh, joined tonight by the Real Asian Film Festival and by Canadian national treasure, Lainey Louie from Bell Media's eTalk and The Social. We're going to be using the hashtag TIFF at home. John, thank you again. I really appreciate you taking the time. And thank you for crazy. Appreciate it. All right. Take care.